In life, the businessmen, who begin at the bottom, achieve the more enduring success, and the religious men who reach the highest heights of spiritual knowledge and wisdom are they who have stooped to serve a patient apprenticeship to the humbler tasks, and have not scorned the common experiences of humanity or overlooked the lessons to be learned from them. The first things in a sound life, and therefore in a truly happy and successful life, are right principles. Without right principles to begin with, there will be wrong practices to follow with, and a bungled and wretched life to end with. All the infinite variety of calculations which tabulate the commerce and science of the world come out of ten figures. All the hundreds of thousands of books which constitute the literature of the world and perpetuate its thought and genius are built up from the twenty-six letters. The greatest astronomer cannot ignore the ten simple figures. The profoundest man of genius cannot dispense with the twenty-six simple characters. The fundamentals of all things are few and simple, yet without them there is no knowledge and no achievement. The fundamentals, the basic principles, in life or true living, are also few and simple, and to learn them thoroughly and study how to apply them to all the details of life is to avoid confusion and to secure a substantial foundation for the orderly building up of an invincible character and a permanent success, and to succeed in comprehending those principles in their innumerable ramifications in the labyrinth of conduct is to become a master of life. The first principles in life are principles of conduct. To name them is easy. As mere words they are on all men's lips. But as fixed sources of action, admitting of no compromise, few have learned them. In this short talk I will deal with five only of these principles. These five are amongst the simplest of the root principles of life. But they are also those that come nearest to the everyday life for they touch the artisan, the businessman, the householder, the citizen at every point. No one of them can be dispensed with but at severe cost, and he who